the church. About the most fun you could ever have was singing this song right here. Wonderful Grace of Jesus. Wonderful Grace of Jesus, greater than all my sin. Oh, shall my tongue describe it? Where shall his praise begin? Take it away, my burden, setting my spirit free for the wonderful grace of Jesus. Reaches me. Wonderful, the matchless grace of Jesus. Deeper than the mighty rolling sea. Higher than a mountain, sparkling like a fountain, all sufficient grace for even me. Broader than the scope of my transgressions, greater far than all my sin and shame. Oh, magnify the precious name of Jesus, praise his name. Wonderful grace of Jesus. Reaching the most defiled by his transforming power, making him God's dear child, purchasing peace and heaven for all eternity. For the wonderful grace of Jesus reaches me. For the matchless grace of Jesus, deeper than the mighty rolling sea, higher than a mountain, sparkling like a fountain, all sufficient grace for even me, broader than the scope of my transgressions, greater far than all my sin and shame. Oh, magnify the precious name of Jesus, pray. His name. That'll be good. And lastly, the very first song that we played together, I'll Fly Away. Some glad morning when this life is over, I'll fly away. Celestial shore, I'll fly away. I'll fly away, oh glory. I'll fly away. When I die, hallelujah, bye bye. I'll fly away. Oh, when the shadows of the slide have gone, I'll fly away. Like a bird from prison walls have flown, I'll fly away. I'll fly away, oh glory, I'll fly away. When I die, hallelujah, by and by, I'll fly away. Come on, I say. Just a few more weary days and then I'll fly away To a land where joy shall never end I'll fly away I'll fly away, oh glory I'll fly away When I die, hallelujah, by and by
Good morning, everyone. I'm George Prendel from Community Christian Church, and today I have a devotion for you. But uh, just might mention that uh, kind of felt like uh, we had a full service yesterday when I was looking on YouTube, but we had, uh, you know, Frank with a Bible lesson. We had Leanne with a children's lesson. We had the prices with music and uh, Dan's sermon. So it's kind of like a full service, but uh, of course we weren't here to fellowship with each other. But it was a good day having that. Uh, today I have a devotion for you, which uh, is uh, who put Jesus on the cross. Um, I'd like to read to you from Ephesians 1, 7. It says, In him we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins in accordance with the riches of God's grace. Ephesians 1, 7. Have you ever wondered who put Jesus on the cross? Um, it wasn't Judas or Caiaphas. It wasn't Pilate. It wasn't even the religious leaders who hated Jesus. This may shock you, but there are two answers. First, it was God. Uh, the Bible says it was his plan from the beginning. It's the reason Jesus came to earth. The Bible had predicted his death hundreds of years earlier, but the other answer is us, you and I. Uh, you and I put Jesus on the cross. If we had never sinned, Jesus wouldn't have needed to die. So Romans 4.25 says, He was delivered over to death for our sins and was raised to life for our justification. Because Jesus had died on the cross, our sins are forgiven. Uh, we all are imperfect. We have sins that makes us feel guilty about our past. We have regrets. But God doesn't want us to live with that guilt. That's why Jesus died. Guilt wastes a ton of energy. It wears us out and robs us of peace of mind. Because Jesus died on the cross, our sins are forgiven. We are all imperfect. We have sin that makes us feel guilty about our past. We have regrets. But God doesn't want us to live with that guilt. That's why Jesus died. Now Ephesians 1, 7, contemporary English version says, Christ sacrificed his life to set us free, which means that our sins are now forgiven. Christ did this because God was so kind to us. Okay, guilt waste of ton of energy. It wears us out and robs us of peace of mind. Too many believers are saved but don't act like it. They're full of shame and guilt. It dominates everything they do. They believe in Jesus but they haven't seen, haven't been set free from the condemnation of our, their sin. Romans 8.1 says, now there is no condemnation for those who belong to Christ Jesus. No condemnation means that God doesn't judge you for all the things you have done wrong if you have trusted in Christ Jesus. He took your punishment on the cross. God doesn't have to condemn you because Jesus took your condemnation. That's what Easter was all about. You're forgiven. Jesus died for you and me. You can live with hope and not condemn condemnation. You can be free. Now, I'd like to leave you with uh, some things to think about here. How does it make you feel to realize that Jesus wouldn't have needed to die, that there would be no need for Easter if you hadn't sinned? What makes it difficult for you to accept God's forgiveness and truly be free from guilt? How does understanding that you are forgiven because of what Jesus did for you on the cross change how you handle how others have hurt you? I hope you can take these words and think on them, and uh, let's have a closing prayer. Our Father in heaven, we're grateful for this church and grateful that Jesus did come and pay the price for our sins. And Father, we're just thankful that we can uh, stay in and out of harm's way and we just pray that you would be with our church family and 
all of our families that uh, we might not be might stay away from the coronavirus and not be afflicted by it but this has really been a change for us and we just pray that you would guide and direct us as we go through this procedure and we pray that we would all come out uh, being stronger in the faith these things i'd ask in jesus name amen